Welcome to the solutions for the AP Physics Laws of Motion problem set numbers 1, 2, and 6. We start with number 1 and 2, a couple conceptual questions here. We have a passenger sitting in the rear of a bus claims that she was injured as a bus, bus driver slammed on the brakes, causing a suitcase to come flying forward from the front of the bus, toward her from the front of the bus. If you were the judge in the case, what disposition would you make and why? Well, if this judge knows any physics, he's going to make a verdict of not guilty. Uh, let's explain. Here we have uh, some old people on a bus about to go on a tour, taking a nice photograph. Let's give the lady in the front the suitcase. We're just going to rest it on her lap. Okay? Now she's not holding, it's just uh, resting on her lap. This solution, this question revolves around the concept of inertia. A couple things that you need to know about this. One, inertia is not a force. Inertia is the tendency of an object to resist changes to its state of motion. You may have heard the phrase, an object at rest will remain at rest, um, and there's a rest of it that's very important. An object in motion will remain in motion in a straight line unless acted upon by an outside force. But inertia itself is not a force. The other key thing to know about this is that inertia is directly proportional to mass. Inertia is directly proportional to mass. So the more mass of an object, the more inertia it has. The more tendency it has to resist changes to its current state of motion. Okay? In this problem, we have a suitcase that is sitting on this lady's lap. And all of a sudden, the bus driver is going to slam on the brakes. Well, the suitcase wants to remain in its current state of motion which is the same as the motion of the bus itself and, of course, the passengers that this suitcase is, is attached to due to friction. But if the bus driver slams on the brakes, the suitcase is going to want to continue to move forward as it has been while the bus is stopping. So this suitcase is going to want to move forward to resist changes to its state of motion and if the friction between the lady's lap and the suitcase is not great enough, this suitcase will move forward. So this claim by this uh, passenger that the suitcase came flying toward her from the front of the bus has to be false due to inertia that's not possible. Okay? So a couple key learning things there with regards to inertia. Not a force directly proportional to mass, and this is a uh, passenger who's looking for um, some free money and doesn't know their physics. All right, let's move on to number two. In the motion picture, It Happened One Night, by Columbia Pictures, 1934, Clark Gable is standing inside a stationary bus in front of Claudette Colbert, who is seated. The bus suddenly starts moving forward, and Clark falls into Claudette's lap. Why did this happen? Well, is Clark looking for a little action for, uh, by Claudette, or what's going on here? Again, this answer revolves around the concept of inertia. Clark is standing inside a stationary bus, therefore Clark himself is at rest. So due to his inertia, he wants to remain at rest. The bus, though, suddenly starts moving forward. So as the bus starts moving forward, Clark, in an effort to remain in his current state of motion, actually falls backwards onto Claudette. Way to go, boy using some physics to get a little action. I like it. Okay, we'll talk more about this in class. All right, and lastly, we have number six. 
we have a boat moves through the water with two forces acting on it. One is a two newton, I'm sorry, two times ten to the third newton force forward. We'll call this F1. And it's to push by the water on the propeller. The other is a 1.8 times 10 to the third newton resistive force. We'll call this F2 due to the water on the bow. What is the acceleration, A, of the 1 times 10 to the third kilogram boat? Kilograms is a unit of mass. If it starts from rest, VO equals zero, how far will it move? Of course, is X in 10 seconds, T. And what will its velocity be at the end of this time? And that's the final velocity. We have a lot uh, of information in this problem, and we have a lot to figure out. All right, I'm going to model for you how you tackle these kinds of Newton laws problems. This is a, uh, um, a problem that revolves around Newton's second law, which we'll talk about in detail in class. But that's what this problem revolves around. And whenever you do a Newton's second law problem, you start by drawing what's called a free body diagram. Whether you have a picture available to you, like I've shown here, this is a picture of the boat that I uh, captained in the summertime um, over on Cuga Lake. And uh, whether you just sketch a boat, whatever the case may be, you can actually just sketch a rectangle and let it represent the boat. We do that a lot in here, just let a box represent the object. You have to draw what's called a free body diagram. It gives you a picture of what's going on uh, in this situation so that you can then go ahead and solve the problem. A free body diagram is drawn and contains only the forces acting on the object. So if we were to draw the free body diagram on this boat, we could do it a, number, uh, a couple of different ways. We could show the arrows pushing on the boat, or we could show the arrows pulling on the boat, and quite frankly, it doesn't matter. So we'll say we have a force acting in this direction, and that was the original force described in the problem of the waters on the propeller. F1 equals 2.00 times 10 to the third newtons. Okay? And we'll let that dot represent the center of mass of the boat itself. We have a second force, and it's the resistive force due to the water on the bow that acts backwards on the boat. And that is F2, 1.80 times 10 to the third newtons. Now again, we could take this resistive force and put the arrow on the bow as described, and we could take this F1 value and put it on the back of the boat as described, and that would be the same thing here. What matters is that the arrows are pointing in the right direction and that they're properly labeled with their magnitudes if given. If not, just give them the label. Okay. Are there any other forces acting on the boat here? The answer is yes, but not in the plane of motion that we're asked here. So this would suffice for your free body diagram for this problem. We'll have other problems in which we label more forces uh, that are on the object, like gravity in this case, like buoyant force of the water uh, pushing back up against the bo a boat. And we'll talk more about that in our unit over Christmas. All right? All right, so let's get into it. For A, A wants the acceleration, and it gives us the mass. What's the tie-in between the information provided and finding the acceleration and the mass? Going to the reference table, you're going to see an emphasis in here on solving Newton's second law problems the following way. Once you've drawn a free body diagram, you start with sigma F equals MA you write the equation that represents Newton's second law. And yes, you have options here. You could write F net equals MA. You could write just F equals MA with the understanding that F is the net force. We in here are going to use a mathematical approach to solving Newton's second law problems. 
and we're going to say sigma f equals ma. What does that sigma represent? Well, you should have learned in math class that sigma means to summate or a summation of. So if we read this a different way, it is the summation of forces equals ma. Once we write this statement, we now ask ourselves a very important question. Is this object accelerating in the plane of in the plane in which the forces are acting on it? And the answer is yes, because it's what we're trying to find. We're told that it's accelerating. We're asked to find the value, so we know that the, that, um, the boat is accelerating. If the answer is no, you would set this equal to zero, uh, because if A is zero, then the product of M and A is zero, and so the summation of forces acting on it is zero. Okay, more on that to come later. All right, back to the problem at hand, okay? The next thing we do is we summate the forces. Now, in order to do that, this is a very important step here, we need to determine what the direction of motion is. And clearly, the direction of the motion is forward. So without attaching that arrow to the object, because that's not allowed on a free body diagram, you don't put motion arrows on objects in free body diagrams. But above or below the, the, our uh, free body diagram, we're going to put a motion arrow, and we're going to put on that motion arrow the direction of the overall motion, and we're going to put a letter that describes that motion. In other words, that it's accelerating. Clearly, this boat would be accelerating forward, um, and it would be uh, accelerating to the left as shown in the picture here. Okay? Why do we have to do that? When we summate forces, all forces that are in the direction of the motion or intended motion are positive. All forces in the opposite direction of the motion or the intended motion are negative. There is no positive x, positive y, negative x, negative y when you do Newton's second law problems. Direction of motion or intended motion is positive opposite direction to that is negative. What that means is, in this problem, that when we go to summate the forces, F1 is positive plus a negative F2, or the same thing as minus F2 equals MA. So our summation of forces becomes F1 minus F2 equals MA. You are adding, but you're adding a negative, which is the same as subtracting. We now go ahead and sub in the values. 2 times 10 to the third minus 1.8 times 10 to the third equals our mass, which is given as 1 times 10 to the third times A. Go ahead and algebraically solve for A. And this is a pretty simple one to do. We don't even need a calculator for this one. 2,000 minus 1,800 is 200 equals 1,000A. So we just move the decimal place, decimal point three places to the left. So A would be 0 0.200 meters per second squared. Okay? All right, so we have our answer to A. Let's go back up and remind ourselves what we're looking at for B. For B, if it starts from rest, how far will it move in 10 seconds? That sounds like an x equals VOT plus 1 half AT squared calculation. Substitute x equals 0, since it starts from rest, plus 1 half 0 0.200 times 10 squared. 10 squared is... 100, half of 100 is 50, we need 2 tenths of 50, well 1 tenth of 50 would be 5, so 2 tenths of 50 would be 10, 10.0 meters. C wants to know what will its velocity be at the end of this time, that sounds like a V equals VO plus AT, V equals 0 plus 0.2 times 10, Final velocity, 10 times 